Hi, welcome back. Let's look at Excel Solver. All right, so I went through and set up a problem here. Over on the right hand side is a mini version of the problem. We're going to make believe that we're a public university running a social media campaign to attract more students, encourage them to apply. So we have two decision variables in this example, which is the social media we're deciding between. X1 is Snapchat, X2 is TikTok. Our objective is to maximize. We have an objective function in three constraints. So that's what I set up on the left-hand side for solver. First, I put my decision variables X1 and X2. All my X1s I colored blues just to keep them straight, and all my X2s I did with the orange. All right, so my initial values of my decision value variables are zero. Um, the objective is to maximize, so my Z max is in green over here. I just went in and I filled in <clears throat> all my variables. The objection function is a uh, 100x1 plus 125x2. My three constraints, uh, money, uh, time, and management. Uh, money is 2x1, 4x2. Uh, less than or equal to 60. Uh, we'll get to the left-hand side in a second. I did the same thing for time. I did the same thing for management. All right, so to complete setting it up, we, we're gonna use two functions here. The first one is the sum product. So I put the sum product in, and uh, you can see it up top. It's two arrays, uh, B, 4 through C4 and B5 through C5. I changed the, the B4, C4 to an absolute by hitting the F4 key. I did the same thing for the left-hand side of the equation here. I <clears throat> selected my two arrays and I made the B4, C4 an absolute. What that does for me is allows me to drag and drop my formula down and not have to do it a third and fourth time. All right, and you can see my two arrays. All right, so now we're all set for solver. Uh, solver's in the data tab and over on the right in the analysis. If you don't already have solver, what you need to do is select the file button, add-ins, go, click on the solver, and you're all set. All right, so let's see what it looks like. So I click on Solver, and I get a um, dialog box over here. I have it up on the right. So in my set objective, that's my Z right there. My objective is to maximize, so make sure that's selected. By changing variables, that's my decision variables. So I put in uh, B4, C4 there. Um, next, I have to add my constraints. Uh, there's two ways to add the constraints. You hit the Add button, um, and then you could, if they're all the same inequality, in this case, all of mine are less than or equal to, I can select the array all at once, and that's my cell reference, and select the second array, and that's my constraint. Um, then I hit OK. All right. Then I make sure that I have the blue button checked for the non-negatives. I make sure my solving method is simplex linear programming. And then I hit the solve button. <clears throat> when I do that, it comes up with a screen like this. We can see that from the upper corner, it's filled in my values for me. I should do five x1s and 12 and a half x2s. And that will give me the maximum amount of uh, applicants at 2,062.5. Over here, um, Solver also asks if I want to report. So I click on Answers and I hit OK. And that brings up the Answers report. Uh, really quickly, uh, this is what I did. I also solved it manually so you can see what's going on. Um, found the intercepts so I could graph it out. Uh, that gave me four corner points or extreme points as we call them. 
and then you take those ex the coordinates of the extreme points and you stick them into the uh, maximization function, into the z function, and we can see that uh, at 5, 12.5, we had an optimal solution. This is what it looks graphically. My orange and my blue are my time and money, and that shapes my feasibility region, which is in blue. You can see the green, which is management, isn't touching the feasibility. That means I have slack or extra capacity there. All right, back to the answers report. That's exactly what I'm given in the answers report. Again, I'm given my Z, and the final value is 2062.5. I'm <clears throat> given my uh, decision variables, X1 and X2, and their fi final values are 5 and 12.5. Those are their coordinates. And then I have my three constraints. I have money, time, and management. The status of those are binding, binding, not binding. So the not binding was the green constraint we saw on the graph. And finally, it tells me how much slack I have. So there's 20 units of slack in management. Hmm, that doesn't seem like enough for, a, uh, for an academic place. All right, so that's it. If you have questions, look up the absolute cell references and the sum product for more information. Thank you.